and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a first impression wear test and review on a new affordable drugstore foundation. We are going to be playing around with the new Essence Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation. So if you are interested in seeing how this foundation looks, how it wears on my dry, acne prone skin, how it covers, go over all the product claims, and see how it wears throughout the day, then just keep on watching. I have the foundation pulled up on the Shoppers Drug Mart site here. This is personally where I purchased my foundation from. I purchased mine from Shoppers Drug Mart for $8.99 Canadian, which is a pretty good price. We know Essence is on the way more affordable end of the drugstore. So $8.99 for a full ounce of foundation, I think is a really, really good price. So let's go over product claims um, and shade information, all that stuff. I don't see exactly how many shades it is available in. I will annotate it down here, but it looks like it has a relatively good shade range, has some light shades, some medium shades, and then it looks like it gets fairly deep with number... 310 neutral cocoa being the deepest shade so i'll link or i'll annotate the actual number of shades down below but it does look like the shade range is pretty decent especially for a lower end drugstore brand pretty natural hydrating foundation with hyaluronic acid and aloe vera provides a natural medium coverage finish we love a medium coverage a medium buildable as you can see my skin is terrible right now which is good for a foundation review unfortunate for me personally so we'll be testing the coverage it gives a weightless feel for up to 24 hours leaving you with the perfect combo of pretty and natural vegan paraben free alcohol free oil free and gluten free so just going over the claims briefly this does sound like it is is going to be my dream foundation so my hopes are high um, for those of you who are new or just don't know I have very dry skin and I have very sensitive acne prone skin as you can see I'm experiencing a lot of breakouts at the moment so I personally like for my foundation products to be very hydrating and medium buildable coverage and also long lasting. So this has all of those claims, so I'm very excited about it. This here is how the bottle looks. Definitely a cheaper looking bottle, but I like the actual design. I think it's pretty sleek. And I got mine in 10 Cool Porcelain, which is the lightest shade, I believe. The one up from that, at least in my store, didn't look to be my right undertone. Even though this says cool and I am normally a neutral warm undertone, I still decided to go with this one just because the other shade above looked a little bit off. Now that we've gone over all of the product claims, pricing, how much product you get, etc. We are ready to try out the foundation, but first we are going to prep the skin to give the foundation a fighting chance. I do this for all of my new first impression videos. I follow the normal routine that I would when doing my foundation to ensure that I'm giving the foundation the best shot. I wouldn't go in with a new foundation with like non-moisturized skin or with a brush or with my hands because that's not something that I normally do. So I like doing the steps that I normally do to give the foundation the best chance to succeed on my skin. So with that said, I've already gone ahead and cleansed my skin. I have gone ahead and moisturized about half an hour ago. So that is what you're seeing here, just cleansed, moisturized skin. And for primer, I like to use my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer when trying new foundations because this one is a very light consistency. It's not gonna change the texture of my skin. Additionally, I also like to use a clean beauty blender. I'm using my um, Sephora collection one. This is my personal favorite. So I'm using two of my favorite products that I know work well with other foundations to give this foundation a fighting chance. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. If you've never tried out this primer and you have dry skin, please try it. It is incredible. It doesn't change the texture of your skin. As I said, it's not going to do any smoothing, any blurring. It's really just going to add that extra bit of hydration that my skin at least needs. Um, and it does leave a slight bit of a tacky finish behind, which is going to help the foundation grip to the skin. This is personally one of my favorite primers, especially when testing a new foundation. I feel like I am going to be holding this foundation to a high standard because it does have all of my favorite like foundation claims minus a dewy finish. I am usually okay with like a natural to dewy finish. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply it on the back of my hand. I don't wanna apply any directly to my face because my skin is so irritated and inflamed right now. I don't want any bacteria crossover. So applying a decent amount to the back of my hand there. That shade match looks really good actually for something called cool porcelain. It doesn't look very cool undertone to me at all. If anything, it looks like it's pulling a little bit warm. Yeah, I really like that shade for me. I was worried about it when it said cool, but that shade honestly looks pretty good. All right, so far it doesn't look like that gave me much coverage. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more. All right, so, so far that is how like one layer I would say is looking. The first little bit that I put on my skin was super, super minimal. So I'd say that's about like one layer on that cheek. Um, the coverage isn't as like medium as I thought it was gonna be. To me, this is like light medium, but we will definitely try building it up a bit more. But I will say that it looks amazing on my skin in terms of like texture. It's not accentuating any texture on my face whatsoever. Granted, this is like my good breakout side, but it looks very healthy, very like quote unquote natural. So let's go ahead and apply some to this side. This is the side that I'm definitely more curious about. We definitely need more coverage on this side. So let's see if we can get that. That there is how that side is looking with just one layer of the foundation. Again, my thoughts are really the same as the first side. It's looking beautiful on the skin in terms of like texture and finish, but I'm definitely not getting as much coverage as I would like. So I'm going to throw on a little bit more and see how much we can build this up. This is how this cheek is looking with that second layer built up. I will say it's still looking decent texture wise, but I don't think that that second layer really gave me more coverage at all. So I would say as of now, I'm getting light and medium, but not buildable. I'm gonna go ahead and put foundation on the rest of my face, try and even everything out, and then I will give you guys another update before we go in with concealer. We definitely have more coverage on the cheeks for sure. I probably applied like two to three layers. Took a lot to build up this amount of coverage, and I will say that the foundation is starting to look quite cakey in some areas of my face. Could be because it isn't desired to be built up in the way that I did. I did really, really prep my skin and it shouldn't be looking this dry in some areas, dry and patchy. So around my chin here in this area and then in this area, it's looking quite dry and patchy. On my bad acne spot on my cheeks, it's looking quite dry and patchy. And then in between my brows, which is my biggest trouble area of my face, it's looking very, very dry and patchy. I am going to use my Quo Beauty Miracle Concealer under my eyes, and then I'm going to use my NARS Chantilly Light One Soft Matte Complete Concealer on any of my acne spots. And then I'll probably just go in with my MAC Studio Fix Powder, smooth everything over, Maybe some setting spray, I'll let you guys know, but I'm gonna go off camera while I do that. But this is how the foundation is looking at this time. I'll come back once I've concealed and powdered and whatnot. So that is what we are looking like now. I don't love how it looks. Um, I think it looks a little bit better with the powder smoothed over on top, especially around my acne, but it's just looking a little bit dry and crepey and it does seem to be like bunching up and just looking I guess overall dry especially in this area here which is my problem area but my Quo concealer normally will smooth that over a little bit. I'm not loving it so far still. I am going to go ahead and continue the rest of my makeup. I'm doing a wearable makeup look for a different video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I just wanted to check in now before I do like my final check-in before we do the wear test. I also might try it out tomorrow just to give it a fighting chance because I don't know if my skin is just like way too dry, if I did something wrong. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish my makeup and I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. So this is the finished look, really pink and pretty, but let's talk about the foundation. So I pretty much still feel the same way as I did when I checked in with my powder. I have gone in with some setting spray, which has taken away a little bit of that like powdery, patchy, congested look, like especially in my area here. 
um, in between the brows, still not looking great, but these areas here are looking marginally better. Usually my foundation, I like it the longer it wears because I have such dry skin. It looks best once it's been worn for like two or three hours and my natural oils have come through a tiny bit. So I'm predicting that will be the case with this one especially. And I think I'm going to do another wear test tomorrow just to give you guys a little bit of an all encompassing rounded opinion on the product. I feel like wearing a foundation once is so hard to get a good idea of how you feel about it, especially with my skin acting up so badly at this time. So I'm going to go ahead, continue doing what I need to do for the rest of the day. I have some errands to do, some more filming stuff to do but this is how we are currently looking with the foundation for $7.99 at this point $7.99 or $8.99 either or um I definitely don't think that this is a bad foundation as of now I just think that it isn't as buildable as it claims I would say that it's more light medium not so buildable and it doesn't look great on dry skin even though it claims to be like a super hydrating foundation so that's how i'm feeling now we'll see how it wears throughout the day we will continue trying it out tomorrow as well but that is my check-in for right now and i will talk to you guys later on in the day once it's worn for a little bit longer on the skin all right so editing taylor here um excuse the appearance it is what it is I have no idea where my day one end of day impression is with this foundation so thank god I decided to do a full two day wear test or we would never know my thoughts. Basically at the end of the first day I really really liked how the foundation had settled um, and I essentially just liked how it looked better than when I first applied it. My, with my natural oils coming through it looked really good at the end of day one and day one I wore it for like eight hours I want to say. Sorry we don't have the real check-in for day one. Um, but let's see how I think of the foundation on day two. Welcome back to day two of testing out the Essence Pretty Natural foundation. It is currently 3.45, um, another late start to the day. So let's go ahead and try out testing this foundation with some different products. I have already gone in and cleansed and moisturized my skin. Still covered in acne, nothing's changed. Um, so yeah, let's try out some new prepping products and see how I like the foundation today. But I was really, really happy with it by the end of the day yesterday. Today we are going to be prepping with my favorite foundation primer of all time. This is crazy expensive, but I wouldn't use it if I didn't think it was worth it. I've repurchased it. I've repurchased the mini, I think, three times, and now I have the full size, and I will always continue to repurchase this. This is the Lila Bia Glow Priming Oil. If you have dry skin and you love a dewy look, this is going to be the best primer for you. I've tried legitimately every hydrating, dewy, glowy primer out there, and if you like a super, super glow glow, this will give you that. So I'm going to take like a full pump's worth. We'll start with that. Mix it into my fingers. You can see it's like super glowy and glassy and greasy, if you will. Um, but it just gives the most gorgeous hydrated glow to the skin. Today we're using a different sponge. Just figured I would switch up everything. This is the Koki foundation sponge. I absolutely love it. it. Retains a lot of moisture, which is good. So I'm just going to apply this directly onto the sponge. All right, let's see. Again, just like yesterday with that first little layer, it's very light coverage. I guess it says natural medium on the website, but it's definitely more of like a light natural. I would not say that this is medium coverage unless you really, really build it up. And then that's just kind of a waste of product. It's definitely more of a light coverage. So like I applied a decent amount and I just feel like that didn't really do anything. I went ahead and built it up a decent amount. Um, I actually ended up applying like a lot. I would say probably like three pumps equivalent. Um, and I'm still not really getting much coverage. It is surprisingly still clinging to these areas around my mouth, which I didn't think it would with all of the super, super hydrating prep that we did. Doesn't look bad at all between my brows today, but definitely in this area and on either side of my nose, it's looking very dry. So I don't know. I feel like this foundation just isn't for me personally, but I don't think it's a bad foundation. I think the coverage just isn't enough for me and I don't think it's as hydrating as it claims to be or maybe my skin is just so so dry i am going to go ahead and conceal and then powder off camera so i'm going to use my covergirl true blend concealer in fair portion 
porcelain, my favorite drugstore concealer. And then I'm going to use my Maybelline Fit Me under eye powder and then my MAC Studio Fix dusted all over. And I will check back in with you guys once we are all concealed and powdered. Then I'll do my makeup, check back in again and then we'll do the wear test. So I'll be back in a moment. I haven't gone ahead and bronzed or done my brows or anything, so ignore how pale and crazy I look, but here is the face with concealer and powders on. It's looking better between the brows, but it's looking really bad around my mouth and then also on either side of my nose. I just don't know if this foundation is for me. Maybe in the summertime when my skin isn't so dry or when my acne isn't so bad, but right now I'm not loving it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and then we will continue doing a wear test but I'm not loving the base. I definitely have foundations that I prefer more, especially when my skin is super dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish my makeup. I will check back in a little bit. Here is how the foundation and everything looks all settled in and finished. Again, like yesterday, I now like the way that the foundation and everything looks. It still is a little bit on the dry side, but I'm convinced that like my MAC Studio Fix powder can save anything. Just a little bit of MAC Studio Fix to smooth everything and then some setting spray to blur makes the skin look good. I don't know. I just, I like how everything looks now, but I didn't like how it looked first applied again could be my natural skin oils coming through a little bit more to get rid of the dryness, could be a little bit of that setting spray added or powder to smooth, but whatever it is, I do like the way that my skin is looking now. So I feel like even at the end of this video, I'm gonna be undecided on this product. So it is 5.05 currently. I'll probably wear the foundation for like seven or so hours and let you guys know how I think. I'm anticipating that I will like it more at the end of the day than I even do now. That's just how it works with my skin, but we'll see. I'll let you guys know my thoughts in a few hours, so I'll talk to you guys then. All right, so it's been a few hours since I last talked to you guys. It is currently 11.55, so almost midnight. Um, and I'm going to take off my makeup. I've just been hanging around the house doing editing. I had a nap, I had dinner, haven't been doing a whole lot today, but my makeup, I feel like looks exactly the same as it did when I last talked to you guys. I do have a little bit of dryness around the nose, but overall I think that it is looking better than it did yesterday, although I did like it at the end of the day yesterday. So I would say that this foundation is definitely worth trying. It's an amazing shade range, amazing price. You get a really good amount of product for the price. I think if it gave a little bit more coverage and it was a little bit more hydrating, it would be up there with my favorites, but I'm not obsessed, but I also don't think it's a bad foundation. So if you have like very normal skin and you have not a lot of acne or you just don't want a lot of coverage, I think this would be pretty perfect for you. It's definitely great for everyday wear. Granted, it's called Pretty Natural, so it's a really good name for the product. On a regular basis, this would be a good product for me, but just currently it's not great, but I can still make it work if that makes sense. So you guys let me know. Have you tried this? Have you heard about it? Are you going to be trying it? Are you interested? What are your thoughts? Do you think it looks like garbage on me? Do you think it looks okay? Let me know your thoughts on this, but I definitely would say that it's worth it. I'm just not like head over heels for it, but for the price, for the drugstore, I think it's really good. So if this video was helpful for you guys, I definitely would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and also to subscribe if you aren't already. That really helps me out more than you guys know. Turn on the notifications if you don't have those on. I have lots more drugstore product reviews coming your way over the next month or so. We are getting tons of new releases as it is the beginning of the new year. And as always, I hope that you have or had an absolutely awesome day and thank you so, so much for watching. Bye!